Hello, everybody. My name is meteorologist Hutch Johnson. I'm joining you as we head into the middle of a week as cold air dives south. We have a chance at some snow as we go through the next couple of days. The New England states could see some snow and the Colorado light Rockies will likely see some significant snowfall as we go through the latter portion of the week. Will this snow kick off a chance for some severe weather? I'll have details on all of this. You're watching Hutch's Weather. Let's get started right now with a look at some model guidance from a couple of different models. And we're going to look specifically at snowfall potential with these models as we go through the next several days. Now, these are longer range models. So a caveat to all of these models is the fact that we do have to put a grain of salt the farther out in time we get with these because the accuracy does tend to drop off a pinch as we go through. Let's take a look at some 24 hour snowfall totals. We're going to start with this European model. Now, as we go through the middle of the work week, there'll be a chance for some snowfall in and around portions of the northeastern United States and the elevated terrain. So we're talking uh, New Hampshire, Connecticut, Maine, and on into upstate New York. Some snowfall that could amount to a few inches of fluffy flakes in a few areas, but the bigger potential for snow is going to be in the Rocky Mountains, and I'm certain we're going to see some significant snow. This all begins as we head into the latter portion of the week on Friday. So Friday, we'll start to see Montana snow, Idaho snow, as a low pressure system begins to develop, and this storm system is going to cut off from the main jet stream flow. As it does that, that means this system is going to sit in the central Rockies, impacting portions of Wyoming and Colorado and as far south as New Mexico as we go through the next few days. So this European model shows that outstanding chance of snow persisting in the central Rockies. And then once we get into the early part of next week on Monday, October 21st, we expect this storm system to exit slowly out into the central plains. So we could have a few areas that have sustained uh, snow potential over several days in the northern Rockies. Now, one thing we can do is compare this European model with an American model and maybe one other bonus model to really see if there's some consistencies between these models. First thing we're going to notice as we switch over to the American model here is that there is maybe a better chance on the American model of some accumulating snow, but the locations are similar as we go into your Wednesday. So, Wednesday, snow, northeastern United States. We'll wait for your videos and pictures, and I'm sure it's that time of year again as the cold air starts making its way through. Here comes the main event, cutoff low developing in the central Rockies as we go into Friday and Saturday. Some areas of potentially heavy snow at altitude will be developing with this storm system. Does this model, does this American model, cut this system off and let it linger in the central Rockies? It most certainly does. It does weaken as we head into next week, and that's when the impacts of this storm may be felt more in the plains, but again, it is weakening. So that's a look at two models. Let's go for one more, shall we? Let's look at what the Canadians say. The Canadian forecast model here does the same thing. It shows that there will be this um, midweek chance of snow in the New England states. And then as we head into the Friday time frame, here we go, Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado, Utah, seeing a chance for some snow. Notice it doesn't look as heavy or as prolonged, but it's in the same general vicinity as we go into the weekend ahead. This then weakens and heads off into the central plains. So most models are concurring with this. Now, what we're going to do is look at those mid atmospheric winds at what we call 500 millibars. It's about halfway pressure-wise through the atmosphere as we go up. And this upper level wind pattern, as we take a look at the main model here, we'll go ahead and stick with the American model with this. We're gonna look at the 500 millibar wind and we're going to take a look at the American model. So let me load that up here right quick and here we go. Now. What you're looking at on this is the mid-atmospheric flow, not quite at jet stream level, but halfway through the atmosphere. And we oftentimes think of this as the average flow of the atmosphere. It does show that the overall trend is for this flow over the northern Rockies and into Canada. So this would be a dome of very warm air here in the southwest United States. And then a huge trough digging its way down into the Mississippi River Valley and the Ohio River Valley out here. Now, as we go through, that's what's going to bring the snow, by the way, as we go through Wednesday in the New England states. Watch what happens from the upper left. A trough starts digging out of Western Canada 
and British Columbia. The main jet stream flow then takes a dive down south into the central west coast of the United States off the coast of Northern California. The colors here, by the way, indicating where the strongest winds are. Those make landfall in Northern California, and here we go. Now what you're seeing is a low pressure digging and strengthening, or a trough of low pressure digging and strengthening in the southwestern United States. But it is at the same time cutting off from the main jet stream flow, which is up in Canada. When this happens, these type of systems can get stuck or cut off from that main jet stream flow and it'll take something to kick it out of here or it will just sit and spin and weaken. What will it be? This one sits and spins and notice how it weakens until we get into Sunday. It starts picking up a little bit more energy. Now, we were talking a little bit about a chance for potential for maybe some strong thunderstorms here or there. I think the best chance may be indeed in Texas. We'll look more at this in just a moment. But here this cutoff low meanders through the central and southern Rockies all the way through the weekend before finally getting sucked back up into the main jet stream flow and working its way eastward toward the Great Lakes in more of a zonal or straight west to east jet stream pat pattern with fewer big dips and troughs in that overall pattern. So that's a look at what this looks like at that mid-atmospheric level uh, as we go through the period of the rest of our work week into the weekend ahead. Now let's take a look at what this does look like with regards to the future radar. And to do that, we're going to turn it over right here. Now, this is the American forecast model. We'll tune in first to the Northeast or U uh, New England states. The future radar then, as we go from Tuesday night and into Wednesday, shows that the air will be cold enough for some pockets of snow here and there, mainly in upstate New York, northern Vermont, as well as New Hampshire and on into portions of Maine as we go through. So be prepared for some snow, particularly at the elevated terrain as that cold air takes hold. And this really should be wrapping up as we head into the day on Thursday with most of the energy working its way offshore. That's when we turn our attention right back out here to the West Coast. And as we do so, we're watching what's moving out of Vancouver, British Columbia. And the future radar really starts to light up and show the activity increasing as we head into Friday. Here we go. So from Billings, Montana, and the mountains just west of town, so maybe Red Lodge picking up some snow, all of the mountains of western Wyoming, including the Grand Tetons, all the way south into Salt Lake City, Utah. In the morning hours, when we're at our minimum temperatures, we'll start to see that chance of snow, maybe even getting down to some lower elevations, say 5,000 feet or so, as we look into parts of western Wyoming. Then, as we let this model continue. It shows a snowfall potential moves all the way down into southern Colorado and the mountains of northern New Mexico. So outside of Taos and well, north of Vegas, we'll have a chance at some of those uh, showers of snow working their way into the mountains of Colorado as we go through Saturday. And it lasts all the way into, as time shows here, Sunday before finally exiting. Now, here's where this storm system begins to exit or kick out of the Rockies and into the Central Plains. When this happens here on Sunday and into early next week, this will throw waves off of the Southern Rockies of energy that will push their way into the Southern and Central Plains. The only place with significant amounts of moisture will likely be parts of central Texas. So as this cool, dry air and energy rolls off the Rocky Mountains, I do believe Texas Western Oklahoma and Kansas will have a chance at a few strong thunderstorms uh, that develop as we go through. It doesn't look like a widespread ordeal and you can see those chances swiftly zip out, but not leave entirely until we get through the middle of the work week. So that is a look at the forecast with some big time changes. What are we talking about with regards to snowfall potential with this particular system? Let's go back here and take a look at that and uh, zoom in on a particular area. So why don't we go ahead and go back to a look at this well, let's go to the European model. I do like the way it handles some of these longer range forecasts a little better. And for the Rockies, we're talking about more of a longer range forecast. So we'll start there as we load this up. And I, bear, uh, I appreciate you bearing with me. We'll zoom this in on the Central Rockies region here so that we can see just a little bit more detail about the snowfall potential in this area. Now, all of these views that we get here won't include all parts of the region, but what we will see is what the snowfall potential potential is with this. So we'll sneak over here and we'll look at the total snowfall accumulation. 
This number is going to be huge. It's not going to all fall as snow all the time. And likely we won't see numbers that are, well, this much completely, but it does give us an idea of the potential. And the model is calling for the potential for up to around two feet of snow in certain areas of the Southern Rockies of Colorado. So that's what we have going on there. Now let's take a look at the Northern United States. And to do that, we'll go ahead and switch back to another model and let's switch our view off to the New England states as we go through the next 24 hours and into your hump day. Here's what we're looking at. A chance for a few pockets of elevated or enhanced snowfall potential. One being in Virginia. And down here we could see an inch or two or three of snow in West Virginia. Now, as we go up into the northeastern United States, we could see three, maybe five inches of snow in upstate portions of New York, and that will extend up into northern parts of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine as well. That is a look at your weather. I am meteorologist Hutch Johnson. If you uh, enjoyed the information that you got here, I sure would appreciate your likes on these videos. That does help me out, and I'd appreciate a follow as well. And I ask you to comment with are you ready for winter yet? Are you excited to see that first snowfall of the season? All right. Let me know where you're watching from as well. And until next time, have a wonderful day. And thank you for watching Hutch's Weather.